Okay, Mark, it looks like we're ready. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, the meeting is yours. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this evening's meeting of June 17th at 5.10. This is the City Council special virtual meeting, special meeting. Uh, we will go into call, roll call here, please. Uh, Miss, Miss Ayala? Thank Abla. you. Huh. Thank you, Council Member Monica Garcia. Here. Council Member Alejandra Avila. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Paul Hernandez. Present. And Mayor Manuel Lozano. I believe he will be joining us uh, momentarily. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. Moving on to public communications. Uh, I believe there might be a quick typo here. Uh, public communications uh, is for, for folks on the internet. Uh, they should be mail, emailed to jayala at baldwinpark.com before 5 p.m. today, but I believe it's actually should be at uh, comments at baldwinpark.com. Is that correct, Shannon? Um, yes, we did make a change, but we have been receiving public comments on both emails. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll start with the public communications at this time. Uh, City Clerk? We actually, we actually, Mayor Pro Tem, have none for this special session. They're all for the City Council meeting. Thank you very much. Appreciate that information. Thank you. Excellent. Moving on to our item that we have for this evening. Open session is the FY2020. Dash 21 budget presentation by Rose Tam, our finance director. Shannon and Rose, please take it away. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, uh, Rose is going to go over the budget, um, and it's not a big change from what you lot sat, saw at the last time. Um, we were able to um, make the cuts as we discussed, um, and I'll let um, to close the gap pretty close to a balanced budget, not quite. Um, but we'll still have some options to talk about to be able to do that. Um, Rose, do you want to go ahead? Yes. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and City Council. I'm going to present the proposed budget for fiscal year 2021. This year's budget theme is proactive planning to minimize fiscal impact during uncertain times. And here's the grants of the general fund balance. With the proposed budget, our projected general fund balance will be 6.8 million. Next slide, please. This slide will show you the summary of all the general fund revenues and the total decrease the total estimate decrease will be about 5.86 million due to the COVID-19 financial impact to the city and to the whole country. And as you may see that the projected property tax is going to be reduced about 240,000 and the sales tax has a huge impact also that we are going to have about three quarters of a million decrease. And we also see decrease in TOT and franchise tax, utility tax and license and permits and business license also in all other areas. Any questions from this slide? Okay, none, move on. This is the pie chart showing the general fund revenue and about 79% of the city's revenues are from taxes and then 14.7% from charges for services and then fines, penalties, license and permit and use of money and property then other miscellaneous taxes and fees. 
Any question? If no, we can go to next slide. So this slide will break down in more details of the city's general fund revenue. It shows sales tax, POT in all uh, more details that the percentage of the total city general fund revenues. Any questions? If no, we can go to next slide. So this is the chart and showing the property tax and sales tax, utility tax, franchise tax from 2012 to 2021 and showing the up and down throughout these years. Next. This also showing the general fund revenue history from 2012. Any question? This slide show the general fund expenditures by department and due to the financial impact, uh, we have presented the projected number to the city council. The original deficit was about 6.8 million. With city council's direction, staff came back and worked very hard to try reduce revenues in all areas. And as you may see on this line, and you can see the decrease or reduction we have taken to lead us to 28.65 million in total proposed expenditure compared to the original adaptive budget 34 million in fiscal year 1920. So the total decrease in revenue or reduction is 5.498 million. Any question? Yes, uh, Rose? Yes. Um, just for clarity for you know those that are listening uh, right now in, our, in the audience and so folks understand in regards to you know the, our, our budgeting process here and, and, and budget. Yes. Um, when it comes to the police department, and I think the next slide shows this um, a little bit better, but for the police department, for the uh, approximately $18.8 million, 14.7 uh, of that is for personnel costs, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, residents understand that, you know, the, the because of the business model that we have for police departments, you know, they are a 24-hour uh, model, uh, you know, in, in the sense that we have officers and civilians uh, you know, civilian dispatchers on call 24 hours uh, throughout the night, seven, you know, all seven days a week, um, including holidays. Um, and that's uh, one of the primary reasons for why we see such a huge uh, number for that department in comparison to the other departments. Uh, the other departments, you know, only work uh, during the day, during the daytime primarily, uh, not to mention that they also work on weekends and on some certain holidays uh, from time to time. Um, but I do want to also, you know, call out, you know, uh, I think all of us, um, I can certainly speak for myself, but I think the rest of the councils have certainly been asking for the police department to look uh, for ways to uh, reduce their costs uh, for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, what we see now is close to a $3 million uh, reduction in their uh, accounts, um, not only because of COVID, but also uh, as a result of, you know, council, I think. Uh, have been asking for for them to look at uh, cost savings because I know historically um, other departments um, excuse me historically police departments uh, uh, don't necessarily see a, a, a reduction in their state in their departments uh, budgets um, because they're sometimes seen as the sacred cow um, I just want to be very clear that I personally don't see that um, see that view 
Um, and I think the number here certainly shows uh, that attempt to begin to um, reduce and also make them accountable as with all of our departments, as we clearly can see uh, here. Can you just share for myself also, why do we see uh, an increase of 170,000 in rec and parks and community services? Uh, yes. I also want to point out, I also want to point out the police department you see here, because uh, over 95% of their costs are funded by general fund. Uh, some other departments, their costs or personnel costs are funded by special revenue funds. And the increase in recreation and community services here are mostly causing by the minimum wages increase to the part-time employees. Otherwise, they have uh, reductions in many other areas too. Um, Rose. Yes. Um, is there any way uh, for the public and so they can better understand, the, understand this? I know the big question is the police department to have more of a detailed report on where exactly the expenditures are in the police department. That way we can be more transparent and they can see where exactly the money is going. I know 14.7 is personnel, but if it could be a little more broken down and they can exactly see where that money is going to the police department, please. Uh, yes, due to the limited time, of the meeting and presentation, we post the proposed budget in more detail on the city's website and residents and everyone else can go to the city's website and download the or view the detailed proposed budget. And later on, we will also prepare a very detailed line item proposed budget book or adaptive okay. budget book uh, once tonight's meeting is over and they can access that on the website or they can request for a hard copy from the city clerk's office or from finance office on the second floor. Yes, the proposed budget um, can be very confusing. There's so many items. Is there any way you can put on the website just the police because that's a big question right now just the police department section broken down so they can just click on that they don't have to go through whole the whole booklet the whole proposed budget they can just look at the police department's budget and the breakdown of the expenditures and where the money's coming from to pay for what and how we're spending the money to the police department that way it's easier for them to understand and to locate on our budget please yes I will do that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a very good uh, recommendation, Councilmember Avila. Um, you know, if we can do that for the rest of the departments, so that way everyone understands our budget process. Uh, very good uh, recommendation, Councilmember yes. Avila. Yes, I can provide a very detail on every single line item that come up with the 18.8 million expenditures. Rose. Yes, hi. Hi. So thank you for that information. I'd like to know what is the total budget of the city, which includes a general fund and restricted funds, special funds. What is a total budget? Yes, the total budget is up is about seventy eight million and two hundred eighty nine thousand. Okay. The citywide budget and the total I, general fund budget is twenty eight billion. Do you think that it would be Councilmember Garcia? Can you repeat your question? I think you're yeah, breaking up. That's Sorry. That's the information that I was wanting at the last council meeting because I think it's important for that. Can you hear me? Okay, now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. 
So yes, this was the information that I was requesting at the last council meeting because I do think it's important for the public to know what the city's total budget is. And I think that knowing where the city has allocated its funds, including general fund, restricted fund, special funds, all of it will provide a, a, just a more transparent picture of our efforts here at the city. And I think just by hearing that number, when you look at you know, the, the police department's budget in the entire city budget, uh, I think it's important you know, that it's balanced against investments we've made in infrastructure, community development, uh, you know, public works, and just different community and recreation, you know, recreation community services. So I think it does provide a more balanced picture, and we also need to provide that to the public. I think that right now we just need to be as transparent as possible um, so that people have all the information they need in understanding how our city allocates its funds, uh, including the police department. So thank you for that information. And if we can include the total budget on the city's website per uh, council member Avila's recommendation, I think that would be you know, even better so that we could just provide, again, more transparent uh, snapshot. Uh, hi, uh, Councilwoman Monica. Uh, yes, the information was, uh, I mean, the information is posted on the city's website, including the citywide budget, and which is, uh, is 78 million and 289,000. And I can also let the public know and let you know that the total percentage of the police budget in general fund is 66% and 24% uh, compared to the citywide budget. Does that help? Okay. Yes, thank you. So yes, and you know, the general fund is obviously it's our focus uh, because it, it provides its discretionary monies. And I, for, for a number of years, have, you know, had my own concerns about what upwards of 70% of our general fund going to one department. However, I think for the purpose of the public dialogue that's happening right now, I think it is important to show that in the bigger picture, in the, um, you know, the bigger budget picture, it does come down to, what did you say it was, Rose? Uh, it is 66% uh, to the general fund and 24% of the citywide budget. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's important because it really, it paints a picture and it tells a story of, um, you know, all the investment that we're making in other areas of the city outside of the police department. So let's go ahead and, and present that information and paint that picture for the public so that we can, again, just be as transparent as possible. I don't think people really understand general fund versus the, uh, you know, the city's budget. So I think this is, you know, part of that process of being transparent and, and informing our, our public and our residents and there is definitely what they say, you know, what is it? And there's power in, in knowledge. And, and so I think we just need to um, walk the public through and let them know kind of, this is a bigger, this is the bigger budget. This is a bigger picture. And then this is our general fund. I think that's important. Right. Council member Garcia, this is a uh, city manager Yahtzee. Yes, that's yep. a great idea. We do have that information. We do have that pie chart. And we'll make sure that it gets put on our um, our website. Uh, you bring up a good point, and as, as um, Rose Tam mentioned, the police budget citywide is twenty four uh, percent of the citywide budget. Public works is actually twenty eight point three percent. So it does show we're also investing in the community 
Um, and in addition, community services and community development combined, both of those are about another 20% of the budget. So we will put that information up. Thank you. Uh, Rose, if yes. I can remember another comment. Yes. Um, so, so talking about the police budget, um, again, these, these are great ideas to make sure it's transparent to our community. Um, I know our community knows and understands that safety is very important as well as providing all the services possible for our community. Um, but it is important to, to state that the safety of our community is very important and, and our police department is very important as well as everybody else. And I think if they look at that budget broken down, they'll have a better idea. Just you explaining that 24% of the police is the city-wide budget, it makes more sense. So I think that's all they need, clarification, transparency, so they can see exactly what our police department is doing uh, with that money, what kind of services they're providing for our public uh, to make sure that we are safe and continue to stay safe. Thank you. Yes, I agree. I will post the detailed information line item on the city's website. You're, you're awesome. Thank you, Rose. Any other and questions for the slide? So here's the pie chart showing the percentage of each department's expenditure from the general fund. Thank you. This slide shows the expenditure by category. That, for example, capital, contractual services, maintenance and operations, personnel costs, and transfer out. The total amount is the same, but this slide broken down by category. The other slide is broken down by department. And Rose, just for clarification for the for our audience and others, um, can you can you just expand on what uh, personnel costs are? The personnel cost mainly is cover staff uh, salary benefits and including the helpers uh, retirement pension fund expense things like that. Thank you. And just like any other business, uh, the number one line item in their budget is always personnel costs. So I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, full disclosure and folks understand, uh, you know, how significant that is for any organization, uh, whether it's a private entity or a public entity, such as government and nonprofits. Thank you. Yes, because most of the city-wide project or city improvement projects, such a street improvements and they won't show here because they are funded by special revenue most uh, of the time such as uh, gas tax uh, measure m and prop a prop c things like that This slide shows the transfer out from the general fund to subsidize a other area that uh, needing the match or pay the bond. And for example, all these years, the general funds will uh, subsidize and transfer out certain amount of money to uh, support the summer lunch program or the uh, Prop A Park funds. And also we have, uh, we had issued a bond in the past uh, for the community center. And we still have an uh, outstanding amount that we need to pay. And that's what adds up the total transfer out amount to $719,000. And just for my clarification, uh, the bond payments, is that the $590,000 that you just mentioned? Yes. 
thank you. I just, you know, I don't want under, even myself, you know, we see cough, so we don't under, you know, just for the clarification. Yes. Thank you. It's for the abbreviation. I have a little note underneath. It stands for Certificate of Participation. Thank you. Here's the uh, pie chart shows the percentage of the total general fund expenditures by category. Here's the general fund proposed budget summary showing the total revenue is 28.3 million and the total expenditures including the transfer out of 28 million and 654,000 and give us a projected deficit for fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $350,000 compared to the original projected 6.8 million without the reduction. And uh, in the past and also in this coming fiscal year, we are going to uh, prepare the capital improvement project budget in a later date. And we will present them to the city council for your review and approval. Finally, we want to thank all the department heads and their staff and the finance staff. The preparation of this proposed budget reflects their hard work, dedication, and commitment. We also want to thank the Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council for their continuous support and guidance. Thank you. Are there any other questions, um, Councilmember Avila, Councilmember Garcia? And I think the mayor may have joined us, if that is correct. Hello. Any other questions from anybody else? Seeing none. Okay, um, I'll just make a quick uh, mention of this. Um, you know, one of the things that we've, you know, we talk about uh, transparency um, and accountability, uh, and I'll speak to this more at 7 p.m., um, but that's to, you know, finally for the department uh, to be able to move forward uh, with body cams. Um, you know, I like to, you know, as we'll discuss later, is to, for us to, you know, to make the investment of approximately $100,000 and ask the department uh, to come back and provide us a roadmap and a plan of action of how to implement uh, this uh, necessary tool. Uh, this is something that, you know, provides transparency, um, helps, you know, not only our citizens um, when they make complaints or when they're, uh, they have interactions with our law enforcement officers, and it also protects our, our sworn officers here in Baldwin Park. Um, along with that, uh, you know, it helps with investigations and with lawsuits um, that, you know, from time to time or, or any type of allegations made across, uh, made against our police officers and those um, towards our citizens. So that's something that, uh, you know, I'd like to speak about, and I'll certainly will be uh, making a mention of it at our seven o'clock uh, meeting for the police department. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to go ahead. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Welcome. No, yes, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, yes, that's a great idea. I recall that was one of the conversations Chief McLean um, had with me that he wanted to uh, look into having the body cams uh, for the protection of everybody, the residents, as well as our department. So yes, thank you. Mr. Mayor, take it away. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Okay, go ahead, let's go. I'm on the road, so I'm headed towards the, the, the dais, the chamber. So, uh, but go ahead, that's fine. I'm just joining thank you, you sir. Guys. Yes, All go right. ahead. Any other questions for this item for staff for comments? Thank you. 
Uh, seeing none at this time, uh, we will recess to closed session to confer with our labor negotiators in regards to a couple items there with our agency designated representatives and, uh, and also to discuss with our employee organizations. Um, also to confer with our legal counsel in regards to existing litigations um, and also with real property negotiations pursuant to government code 54956-8. Um, so at this time we will, and of course the last one item is to confer with legal counsel with anticipated litigation. Uh, right now it looks like they might be uh, two items, excuse me, three potential cases. Um, and which we will take up uh, during closed session. So at this time, I'll ask for our council members and mayor and staff to mm -hmm. go into closed session. Thank you very much. All right, Mark, thank you. So take it away. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you.